Okay, and so I simultaneously need to line up these teeth with this bearing that's three feet away. There we go. And then we should just... Yeah! <laughs> okay, we're gonna jump right into this today. We're gonna be doing the camshaft installation. This is my first time ever installing a camshaft. Um, done some research, so I think we'll be good to go. Um, it also seems like it'll be fairly straightforward since 300 Ford uses <coughs> uh, timing gears rather than a chain. So uh, I've got a Melling camshaft here. It's just a stock grind. Um, got a brand new set of gears uh, for the, the crank and the cam. The shop pressed on the cam gears already and I've got the cam gear and then there's a retaining plate and then behind here there's also some sort of like washer thing as well forget what it's called anyways it sounds like it's the best thing to do is get the shop to install this for you since it kind of requires a press I've seen some people just heat the gear up in an oven and slip it on so if you really want to do it yourself at home you can give that a go but if you're already getting machine work done and the shop is buying parts probably best to just let them throw this thing on for you so, without further ado, let's get this camshaft in. So, just like when we installed uh, the crankshaft bearings and also the, uh, the rod bearings, we need to make sure that the bearings that are already installed for the camshaft are spotless. Super clean, no dirt or anything. Um, the shop did install these bearings for me. Um, I've confirmed that the oil holes line up. There's one hole on uh, the first of the first three of the four bearings and then the, the last bearing on the front end of the block has two holes and the one allows oil to squirt out and lubricate the gears it looks like. Um, one thing that I did note right away when I got this back from the shop is that the condition of the cam bearings, and I'll try and flash the photo up on the screen for you there because it's, it's hard to get in with the, the video camera, but um, they're kind of galled and scratched up and I was kind of worried about it at first, talked to the shop, and it turns out, um, again, this is my first time doing it, but uh, he, he seemed like a pretty knowledgeable guy. So what he said that uh, the, the long blocks, especially like these six cylinder inlines, they, um, they can actually warp and bend over time. And so um, they put the new bearings in and they couldn't actually get the new camshaft in because it had warped enough that it was just a few thousandths off and they couldn't slip the new camshaft in. And so they have a special, uh, I don't know, reamer, belt sander, special tool basically that they were able to go in there and um, just take a tiny bit off of the bearing so that the camshaft slips in smoothly. So that's what's up with that. Um, I'm hoping that I won't have any issues. Like he said, it just looks bad because they're really, really soft. And so they just kind of take up whatever imprint of whatever sandpaper or whatever you use on it so we're gonna go ahead and install it um he seems like a really good guy above the board so we'll hope it's good the nice part is with all these all this cleaning um there's only four bearings for the camshaft so it's not overly much to take care of i've already blown out the ports uh the oil ports along this side um, when I blew out the oil ports on the, the crankshaft, so they should be good to go. Um, so we got clean bearings, and then we'll clean the cam. Okay, so actually before I clean the crank, I want to clean up, or not clean up, but install the uh, crank gear before I clean the camshaft, so that when once I clean the camshaft, I can put it in right away. I don't have to wait. Maybe it picks up dirt, whatever. So. Uh, what we need to do, this gear is pressed on. Um, it only has one keyway, so it's well, it can only go on one way. Uh, so we'll fit it onto the keyway, it slides on easy. And then there's a shoulder on this bolt, or on this, um, on this snout of the crank. You can see that um, there's a bit of a shoulder in here. It rounds out and it tapers up. There, I can feel it ridge with my fingers. So that's where the gear stops. It only goes that far. So we need to press it on the rest of the way. To do that, emphasis on the word press, not pound. We don't want to pound this with the hammer because if you remember from the crankshaft video, uh, we do have a thrust bearing on the uh, number five bearing up here, I believe it is. However, we don't want to put a whole bunch of force on that. So what we're going to do is we are going to 
take the harmonic balancer bolt and I'm gonna take uh, the largest socket I have. This is a one and a half inch, three quarter inch drive. Three quarter inch drive is necessary for that to go through. So this is the only three quarter inch drive socket I have. So that's kind of handy that I have it. So I'm gonna slip it on. Um, I can't get this washer on right away. So I'm gonna start with just the bolt and just get it started there. Um, as an aside, I, I lucked out. I almost wasn't able to thread this bolt back into the, the uh, end of the crankshaft because I uh, used a, I, I had to pull the crank, uh, the harmonic balancer off using a gear puller. And I put the pointy end of the gear puller into the threads of the crankshaft rather than putting like loosening the bolt off five turns or so and putting the puller on there and just pulling it out bit by bit. Um, I mucked up the threads a little bit on the end of this crankshaft and I've heard people who have really messed them up to the point where they need to get a special tap and tap them out. So thankfully that didn't happen to me. Um, I was able to get this bolt back in. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to start pressing this gear on. I'll give you a better view so you can see, see our progress. It's going on really pretty easily at this point. Oh, okay, and there we met some resistance. Oh, you know what? I also might be hitting the end of this. Oh yeah, did you look at that? I was hitting the end of this socket. That was my problem. It's not deep enough. Okay, yeah. new strategy. That's tight. Okay, so now I just want to put that timing mark roughly in line with where it needs to be. So the number one piston should be a top dead center. It's awfully close there. So we'll start there. We can adjust if needed. Um, so we're gonna take this camshaft out of the box. All right, so there's definitely some dirt on here. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna lay it down. And I'm gonna start at this end. Uh, it's okay if I got some dirt on this gear because, well, I can clean that later. Um, so I'll start at this end and clean off the bearings here, the lobes, um, the, the drive gear. I think this is for the distributor. Um, we'll clean off, yeah, all the bearing surfaces. this angle you can see I think this is probably a tricky engine to start to do for my first camshaft since it's so long um, however I will I have the engine out so I can reach in here and help it along um, shouldn't have any interference with the crank rods the connecting rods I should say however I hear that if you have aluminum connecting rods they're a lot wider so they can be strong enough and you could have clearance issues as you're trying to get the cam in with the lobes, depending which way the cam is um, indexed. So, well, nothing to do but install. I'm gonna go ahead and lubricate the bearings a bit. Okay, so you can see the first bearing, second, third and fourth. So let's do it. So as you're slipping this through, you want to keep it aligned like parallel uh, to the direction of travel, but you also want to make sure that you don't 
uh, let it drop, bounce. Um, you do it nice and slow and gentle so that you don't nick one of the bearings with the, um, the lobes on the camshaft. They're really, really hard metal. You can rotate it back and forth as you go through. Getting a bit of resistance there. E, come on. Whoops. Sure, it will be fine. trying to be careful so it'll be fine, right? If you're trying, nothing bad can go wrong. Okay. All right. It's uh, definitely like it's moving, but it certainly is, um, it, it spins all right. But I see that it's quite likely that the block was a bit warped because the further in we go, the trickier it is to, uh, yeah, it is tricky to get it in. I just want to be so gentle with it. I'm just going to work it back and forth. This is gonna, I'm gonna show you guys what's happening on the front end of this. All right, so we need to get these timing marks aligned. There's one dot there, one dot here, and I can't set the bearing, like the bearing, the cam into the last bearing until it starts to mesh with these teeth. So I need to be carefully rotated. So I simultaneously need to line up these teeth with this bearing that's three feet away. There we go. And then we should just, ta-da! Perfect. We know we have this installed correctly because A, we put the crank gear on and it only has one keyway cut in the gear. Some of these have multiple keyways depending on what sort of timing advance you want for the camshaft. This has one keyway. So there's only one way it can go on because it's a stock grind. I believe that'll be four degrees retarded on this engine. Um, and that's for cam timing, which is not the same as ignition timing. Cam timing actually changes the opening and closing of the valves in relation to the pistons. Whereas ignition timing only changes where the spark goes off in relation to the pistons. So you, once the cam is in, you can't change the timing. If I wanted to change the cam timing, I could change which tooth I meshed here, but I don't. I'm, I'm running stock, stock grind cam, uh, stock everything. So I'm gonna leave it. Um, so I guess a couple things to note here. Um, I will then need to do install the cam retaining bolts, which are back here. Bolt the cam thrust plate in. Um, it's got these special bolts with the back side of the head cut out. Uh, I've cleaned off the threads and we're going to use some blue Loctite just for insurance. Proper torque spec for these is 12 to 15 foot pounds. I'm going to 15 just because. Um, and then what we'll do, we can't quite access the bolts right here, so we'll just need to spin the assembly a bit. We'll just toss the harmonic balancer on for that. Okay, so now that we got the camshaft in, uh, these lifters, we'll be needing them in not too long. So we want to soak them in oil so that uh, they're not running dry on the first startup. And I think that that helps them get pressurized more easily by purging the air out. 
letting them sit in oil for a little while. Um, I honestly have no clue how lifters work. Uh, I'm pretty certain that this end goes against the camshaft and this end sits upwards and the push rod sits into this hole. In fact, I'm like 99.5% positive if I wasn't allowed to Google it before I installed it. That's how I'd install it. Um, and then the oil can travel up through the push rod. Anyways, I'll Google it, but that's gonna be the way it goes in, I'm certain. Um, so just opening these all up, toss them in a nice clean bucket and then we'll fill it up with our oil. Okay, so I think I'm gonna leave it there for now. Um, I'm pretty happy to have the cam in and that's most of really the internals of the block assembled. Um, we've got the lifters on oil, so that'll be it for today. Thanks for watching um, and stay tuned to start to see the rest of uh, the externals and the top end get put on this thing.